In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to use ChatGPT specifically for scientific writing, which includes reviews, research articles, and even conference abstracts. Now, previously I did a video that was on how to use ChatGPT overall in scientific research, and I got a lot of different questions specifically related to the writing component of that video. So I'm gonna answer some of your questions in here today, talk about some of the ethical concerns, and how to work with this software to get really good results when using it for scientific writing. So if you don't know what ChatGPT is, it is simply a language model program. So basically it's an AI bot that allows you to ask it questions and it gives you results back. It's really helpful because it can really quickly give you results or help you to improve things in a very specific manner that may not be possible without another human to interact with. So for a general example, if you wanted to write a literature review, let's say in one of my fields, let's talk about maternal obesity affecting fetal development. I could ask ChatGPT. So I asked a specific question, can you summarize the scholarly literature on how maternal obesity affects fetal development? So one thing you have to be careful of whenever you're using something like ChatGPT is the quality of the output is going to be related to the quality of the input. So it is going to say, yes, I can summarize the scholarly, the scholarly literature. Obesity during pregnancy is associated with an increased risk of adverse outcomes. Maternal obesity can alter fetal development and growth, leading to a number of complications, including. And now it's giving me increased risks, different things that it could lead to. A big question that I got on my previous video was, how do I get citations for what GPT creates? So here you can see it gave me a lot of information, but no citations for it. So what I can say is, could you include in-text citations for the previous answer? So now it's going to re-give me that answer with now these in-text citations included in. So that's how you simply include in-text citations in to what ChatGPT is giving you. For each one of these potential things that's happening, it's going to now give you a single citation that it pulled that information from. So here you can see is that result, it basically gave me in-text citations and then it will give references down here. Now, if it stops, you can ask it to continue giving the references as well. I'm not gonna do that because it takes a lot of time. But basically that's how you can create in-text citations. Now, the second question that I got asked a lot is, can I just use this and publish it, right? Can I just copy something that ChatGPT says and just publish it? And there's gonna be two things that I'm gonna say on this topic. The very first one is that a lot of journals are actually coming out with guidelines on using AI written material. I think Nature is one example that has said that you cannot include anything written by AI in your journals for publication, they won't be published. So that's one factor is that journals are actually looking for AI written content now, and there's a risk that your paper won't get published just because of the way, just because it was written by AI. The second thing that I will say to this is AI is a starting point. ChatGPT's results are a starting point to what you want to write. AI is not going to be able to write it like a researcher who knows that field can write. It doesn't understand the complexities. It's never sat and collected data. It doesn't understand, and you're not going to write as good of a piece as if you were actually to write it yourself. In fact, if you're someone who's worried that ChatGPT is going to replace researchers, it's going to replace the researchers that are letting it, right? Like if all you're doing is putting prompts into ChatGPT and letting it give you the output and you want that to be your entire job, why are you in research? Like you should be interested in this. Now I'm not saying not to use ChatGPT and what I'm about to cover is a lot of really good ways to use ChatGPT that are ethical and are not just copying it and pasting it. But, if you literally just want to put in a prompt, have it write a lit review so that you can publish it, you really have to question your motives for being in this career field when that's all you want to do. So if you are somebody who does want to write it yourself, but you want to get better at writing, you want to be able to get more efficient at writing, let's talk about how to use ChatGPT for that. So a good example of this is writing a research article. And if you're someone who is going to write a research article and you're just getting really stuck, 
ChatGPT can really help you with this. And if you are trying to write a research article, I really recommend downloading my scientific research paper checklist. It's just a step-by-step -step guide that walks you through how to write it, and you can use ChatGPT for those steps. So the first step is if I was writing, so let's say I'm writing a scholarly search article on how steroid isomers are separated by ionomobility spectrometry using polarization and group one metal adduction. So this is my first research paper. Let's say this is what I'm writing on. And I'm gonna say, I, I just don't know what, what's my first sentence? I don't know what to write. So I'm gonna say, could you write an introduction for this paper? So what I'm telling it is what I want my research article to be about. And now I'm saying, okay, what's, what's a draft of an introduction that I could have for this paper? So I'm gonna let this go ahead and finish. Okay, so this is the introduction it gave me. It gave me a three paragraph introduction. And really, if you look at any of my content on introductions, this is really telling me the background knowledge and a little bit of significance. Like that's what it's giving me right here. It's not giving me the background literature parts of an introduction or anything like that. So already, this is not enough to just copy and paste into your article and get started. So it's giving me these different parts. It's telling me what eye mobility is used for. It's telling me why it's difficult to separate steroids and the recent development. It's talking about what multimerization is in group one metal adducts. And then it's talking about the aims, right? The aims of this paper is to do these different things. That's all really helpful. And that's a really, really good example. So now maybe I can come from this and I can say, okay, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is I am mobility. Maybe I use something similar to this sentence. Maybe I change it a little bit to make it more specific for what I'm talking about. So it's a widely used analytical technique for detection and identification of compounds. Well, I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about separation. So I can maybe pull that in instead of using what ChatGPT gave me. IMS is particularly used for small polar compounds, including steroid isomers. Steroid isomers are actually nonpolar, so you know, like as a chemist, I need to change these things. It's not giving me exactly what I would need to just be able to submit it. And then I could, between this and this, I would talk about steroids. I would go, steroids are compounds that do this. This is why they're interesting to study. And then have, this is challenging because of this. So you can already see, I can use ChatGPT as a starting point. If I if I can't figure out how to do step one, it gives me something to start editing. It gives me something to start working with. And so then I'm able to go through this and create out my introduction where I could have just been stuck before. So that's a really good way to use something like ChatGPT. Another thing is, is when you're trying to write the results, so let's write a ask it to write a result section. So what I'm doing is asking it to write a results section. I'm giving it a couple conclusions that we found and letting it kind of fill in the additional information. And then what you can see here is I specifically ask it to write it in third person. You need to be as specific as possible when you want ChatGPT to give you something specific back. So it's giving me a results section. So the first one is dealing with the resolution above one. However, when steroids were analyzed as monomers, the resolution was lower optimization of the multimerization conditions, I would never say that, showed that all steroids had an optimal condition where they were separated above a resolution of one. And then this is discussion, right? Like this isn't result section anymore. This would be better off to just put in a discussion section on this. So it's kind of giving me a mix. But again, this is something that I would take and then I would edit past this, right? Like I would never use this term it's not giving me everything that I think is important for a researcher to know. I would need to put in figure legends. I would put in more numerical data relative to this. I would need to expand upon this, all of these things. If I'm stuck and I don't know what to write, it gives, it's a good way to do that. So let's move to, from research articles into talking about literature reviews. That's another one that I think is really common where a lot of people are saying, just use ChatGPT to create your lit reviews. And I'm gonna say, you can use it in a way, but it's not the most efficient route. So we kind of did a version of that up here where we were just like summarize it on this. If you just put in write a literature review for me, it's actually not going to do it. It's going to be like, that's too complicated for me to do. I'm not going to do it. 
But what you can do is you can ask it to summarize the literature in a field. So that's what we did when we first got started. And then you can take the different things that it gave and say, okay, these are my different themes, or I'm only going to focus on a certain number of them, and those are going to be my different themes. So now I could ask it, can you summarize the field on, or the field of, let's say, increased risk of gestational diabetes? So let's go. So I'm asking it, can it summarize the scholarly literature on increased risk of gestational diabetes in obese pregnant women? So it's gonna go through and talk about these different things. So you can see it gave me basically a few paragraphs of what is the risk and very similar to how you would write a literature review. And then it also gives me the references. I stopped the generation here, but you could have gotten all of the references for this as well. I'm gonna say, can you summarize the results section of the Browers paper? So now it's going to give me much more specific things. So can you take this and then just, instead of only saying this, you could just take whatever it's giving here and just kind of basically jigsaw puzzle a ChatGPT article. Yes, you can do that. What is the negatives to doing that? So here you're getting something, the study followed over this. There's also that pregnancy-related complications were more common in obese pregnant women, more associated with an increased risk of gestational diabetes. So yeah, we have all of this, and we could kind of Frankenstein this into a larger, more comprehensive lit review by just creating summaries of each of these individual papers and putting it together. The issue with this is... First of all, you're not, are you, you're not reading these papers to understand, is there something more important you should be pulling out of these papers? You're not actually generating a story with this. So this is going to feel very segmented. It's like when a first year tries to write a literature review when they've never done the research before. They're just summarizing papers and combining it together. It's really hard to publish like that because ChatGPT or a first year researcher doesn't know what it's like to actually do that research. They don't know to say, okay, this is not important, but this is important when other people might think that the, the, it would be the opposite, right? So you can take this, I highly suggest using this to summarize your research papers to get an idea of what's going on in you know, the literature at the time. What are the different themes that you should discuss? All of that valid ways to use ChatGPT. But once you've done that, you need to really come through, what's your storyline? How are you connecting things together? Because if you're not doing that, you're gonna have a lot harder time in getting accepted into journals because you're not producing a high quality review. If you're not synthesizing from it, if you can't offer what should be done next, it's not gonna be as high quality of a review because essentially whatever they're going to that paper to, that person could come to ChatGPT and just say, what is this? The value in lit reviews, now that you have something like ChatGPT, is going to be the value in the researcher's advice and knowledge being injected into the combination of literature reviews, not just the summarization of literature reviews. The other thing you will notice is all of these articles are older, right? 2007, 2009, right? ChatGPT is only trained on 2021 and before. So even if you were just to take this, you would then need to go into something like Research Rabbit, like Lit Maps, something to see what's been done next, or even searching this on Google Scholar. What's been done since ChatGPT's summary, right? And then you can go, okay, this is what I'm going to produce from there. So I hope that this was really helpful in good ways to use ChatGPT to actually produce really good writing. The other way that I talked about in the previous video was also to use ChatGPT to help enhance your own writing. And I will link that video up here. And I will also do a link to creating a lit review using ResearchRabbit as well. If you're trying to work through this, how do you expand past just what ChatGPT can give you? If this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel to learn more ways to become a more efficient researcher. I hope to see you in the next video.